Hey, it's Wayne Williams of Speaking of Horses. We're at the Midwest Horse Fair in Madison, Wisconsin, 2024. Here's a talk with Ty Evans. Yep. Hey, Speaking of Horses, and we are at the Midwest Horse Fair in Madison, Wisconsin. It's April 2024. Gentleman I haven't seen for two or three years now, anyway, Ty Evans. He does a lot with mules out of Utah. Yes, You're one of the clinicians here, so welcome. Glad to be here. Well, I'm glad, glad to have you come here. by and yeah. say hello. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing here at Midwest Horse Show. Yeah, so we got uh, a couple of demos every day. We got some participants come in, some uh, some folks with some mules, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure what they're bringing, but we'll we'll find out. And we're here to help. That's what I do. Well, you know that I'm here to help people and. You know, we, we teach principles of mulemanship. I say mulemanship, horsemanship, same thing. We're just dealing with the long ears. And uh, yeah, if we can help these people learn the principles, then they can go uh, apply that to any method they really want, you know. That's kind of plan. Tell me a little bit about what might be slightly different when you're working with mules versus horses. So, a lot of people focus on the differences. And, and there are some differences, you know, time being one of them. What I've learned is you can unfortunately, I'm not saying you should, but you can unfortunately kind of force some horses to do some things, right? I don't advocate that. You shouldn't do that. One of my favorite quotes from Tom Dorrance, he says, you have to treat the mule the way you should treat the horse. So everything that, that I'm doing here with the mule, you can do that with any horse. And that's the similarities I focus on. And I think that's what I was getting at because it's basically, you know, 99.9% or as a guy I work with would say ivory soap percentage, you know, the same, okay? Because there are very little, as oh, what, one chromosome different yep. from a mule horse? It's basically the same thing. Yep. Mules think things out a little differently, a little longer. And I think their thinking process is misconstrued to be stubborn. You're right. When it's really them just taking a little bit longer to think about something. But it's so much the same. Yeah. That, um, I, I give my horses the same amount of time to think that through, you know. Uh, we let the horse think about things, sort through that stuff. And, um, and that seems to be beneficial for the horse. But that kind of stuff is required for the meal. You got to do it for the people. You right. can't. You can't shortchange them all the time. So I guess for a lot of people, they would think that's different because they wouldn't give the horse that time. Maybe. That amount of time, they might say, "Well, no, we got to get it done today." Where with the mule, you just got to think through things. And that's pretty beneficial. I know a guy that rode mules for years out of Whitewood, South Dakota, there in the Black Hills area, and he said the only times he ever really knew a difference was, say, he's crossing a creek, yeah. where a horse might wander through and stumble over rocks and didn't see in the, under the water. The mule would very carefully pick the feet to go and check it out. He said, and just don't hurry them, because if they're not sure of where they're stepping, they're going to take their time. Yeah. And that's really why they use them, say, in the Grand Canyon, because they just don't make those other kind of blunders to the horse wood. That's the main difference, at least yep. as a novice. Yep. The, you know, m most mules are really good on their feet. They're really catty on their feet. We just two days ago, I was riding in the canyon country there in Utah. Red rocks, slick rock, rough stuff. And the, the, the mule that my wife was riding maybe thought this way would work out. And she was working up to the rocks there. But you got to be careful. Side hilling slick rock. You know, they'll slip out, right? Slick rock, right? Right. And anyways, that mule started to slip a little bit, but it caught itself and went right, just went on with it, no big deal. Where I've had horses in the same terrain, same scenarios, and you get some slip going on. So, so yeah, the, the sure footedness is, is definitely an advantage to the, for most mules, you know. So now, what are you doing here? You're doing clinics here at the horse fair in, in Madison. And this is Friday, so you're doing them Friday, Saturday, yep. Sunday. Yep. Uh, how do people contact you? 
So the, the main thing is find our website, tsmules.com. You can go there from the website. There's our articles, there's our podcast show, uh, videos, and then, uh, of course, our clinic schedule. And people can see where we're headed. And we're going to post this on Friday. So if you're in Madison and you're, you want to come to the Midwest Horse Fair on Saturday or Sunday, you'll definitely be able to come and, and uh, catch up with Ty and see his clinic and enjoy. And the sun's out. And it's it feels good. good. Day. Ty, it's really good right here. Thank you. It's very much. Nice. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Ty Evans, he's one of the best. Got a mule? Come see Ty. Got a horse? Come see Ty. You can do any of them. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. And speaking of horses, we'll have reports all weekend from the Midwest Horse Fair.